we all share the same earth and sky. And today, answering an inbox question, Sujo Mohen Segundo, Bono Mujin Segundan, Homon Murio Segungaku, Butsuro Mujo Seganjo. Completeness in body, speech, and mind. <clears throat> The inbox question has to do with making time to do Zazen, how much time, um, you know, generally, you know, from my practice, you know, I talk about 30 to about 30 minutes to an hour uh, is what I'm normally sitting uh, at a minimum, to tell you the truth. Um, but I've been doing this uh, normally a lot longer than most people that I encounter. Um, and so, uh, I have two basic answers about this, and um, one is like um, a shallow end of the pool answer, and uh, the other one is the deep end of the pool answer. And so, um, so let's uh, really tackle this. Someone asked, when I, they've seen me do that a couple of times in videos, and what is that about? And uh, the way I would explain it uh, is it's oceanic presence, that which we already are, and just forming a wave, collecting the energy. Uh, it can be helpful. Um, okay, so shallow end of the pool answer. Zazen is a lot like being a performance athlete. That you want to warm up before you go out on the field. So um, if you're a lacrosse player, you're going to, you know, do warm up exercises. You may stretch, you may do this, you may do that. If you're a weightlifter, if you're a runner, you don't just strap on your shoes and just immediately go out and run. You do some things and prepare. In this same way, with Zazen, this is taking one, as I usually invite people starting out one, three, five, or maybe even up to 10 minutes to sit and just have conscious contact with your breathing, the left hand, which is the wisdom hand, holds the right hand, which is the compassionate action hand. Drop the breath from the upper body down into the area where the hands are. Eyes are open. Uh, in Japanese culture, uh, Chinese culture, that's called the devil's cave. You're giving the, the mind a really good screen to project it's crazy and it's tasseless and everything else that's got running uh, going on. And we just Breathe. Cell phones off, distractions off, shoes are off. Not even having to sit pretzeled up, we can sit in a chair. And just no coffee, no this, no that, no nothing. Except one pointed, undivided, stabilized breathing. We're not, you know, we're not all out. We're embodied. 
So one, three, five minutes. There's a value to that. And then we could do that. I invite you to do that two to three times a day. You know, a diabetic is encouraged to eat small meals about five to seven throughout the day and use that as a point uh, of uh, creating stability and harmony, you know, uh, within their body so that they can have basically um, live comfortably with a chronic illness, kind of like an addict does with recovery or someone with uh, heart disease. So small things throughout the day create a better experience. <clears throat> That's the shallow end of the pool answer. The deep end of the pool is we are fundamentally Zazen. Zazen is not something that you do. Zazen is who we are. It's very much the same thing as yoga. People actually have the idea, and this like is bizarre, and this is so Western, that it's, okay, I'm, I'm doing yoga today. I'm going to yoga class. I'm getting on the mat. And uh, in India, they're like, yoga is who we are. Yoga is not sometime. Yoga is all the time. When we're eating, it's yoga. When we're sleeping, it's yoga. When we're interacting, it's yoga. And to the best of our ability in each moment to have a sense, you know. In Zazen, which is another way of saying yoga, just in another culture, is precisely the same thing. And in fact, you know, this is something that I alluded to um, maybe last week in a post that I made where I said... You know, there are four postures in Zazen. Traditional sitting, there is standing, 360 degree aware observation. There is walking, and then there's lying down. That a lot of times, honestly, every morning uh, when the body boots up, and, you know, there's this flickering of awareness, okay, I'm awake. I'm literally laying there intentionally harmonizing with my breathing and just scanning through my body. Alert, present, mindful in only doing that. And then when I get up, turn on the shower, go in each moment, each activity, only doing that activity is that activity. So turn on the, uh, the water in the sink so that I can shave the head. I walk away from that, but I'm not back there. I'm in the step. And then I'm going into the kitchen and hit the button and turn on the water. And then I prepare the cups for morning tea. And that's the only thing I'm doing. That's where my awareness and my alertness is. I'm not doing task lists and, oh, I got to do this and I got to do that for the day. I'm just being present and mindful with uh, this task. And then when I leave that task, I'm not back there still making tea. Get the shaving cream on the head and I start shaving. I'm feeling, noticing. Okay, did I leave any hair? People make comments during the day if I don't get everything. I'm just completely, you know, in the practice. And so when I'm driving, um, you know, the, I, I am sometimes, my, my meditation practice sucks <laughs> in driving because, you know, I have somebody on the phone and they'll be on the speaker or whatever uh, and try not to do distracted driving. 
Um, but whatever I'm intending to do, I'm there. When I'm with the team, we're there and we're present. So Zazen didn't happen for uh, 45 minutes at 4 a.m. That uh, Zazen, that was that moment <laughs> of Zazen being embodied. And then it, it just continues through all the activities of the day because I am Zazen. Your zazen, and it's just is it eh, zazen or is it <sighs> zazen? You know, where we're, we're really here. I'm not future tripping uh, with the with the mind sending out fishing rods and hooks about what we're going to reel in or re relitigating the past, figuring out ah, I'm mad at that person, I'm gonna you know knock them off the shelf and just, I'll never talk to them again. You know, there's not that crazy going. It's just, mindfulness and awareness is not like being on a cushion where you're like, okay, let's be mindful. Here we go. Okay, we're done. Now I can go be mindless. That's not it. It's, because it's not a yes or a no either. It's a it's a volume knob. It's like there, there's this this thing in what, uh, a particular book uh, the the I really favor a lot. And in the book it says fear is a lack of faith. And, and I said to to one of the people who helped write that book, I said that's a hundred percent bullshit. Fear isn't a lack of faith. Fear is on a scale, and the volume level can be turned down on confidence or faith which causes the volume level of fear to be much higher. But when we're embodied, you know, we can change the volume knob, but it's not a yes or a no. That's like this traditional thing in our society where it's either yes or no, can't be maybe, you know. Um, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. Cats never wonder whether or not they're a cat or whether what they're doing is really right or wrong. Dogs don't go, rah, 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 and question the nature of their bark. <laughs> they're just barking. But here we are, every stick that gets thrown, every task that gets thrown, every comment that gets thrown, God damn if we ain't chasing after that, bro. Holy crap. What if someone just makes a comment and we just see it, but we don't follow it and just remain in body. Now, if we follow it, that's bad zazen. I've been sitting on, on a cushion or walking or doing whatever, totally whacked out and distracted, caught up, wrapped around the axle and thought. Lessness. So, which brings to mind this. Uh, it's something uh, I've been reading. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Mm, this is Kosho Uchiyama Roshi. Uh, someone who, uh, the book is called Opening the Hand of Thought. It's a great Zen book. It's not one of those shit books. I mean, we have way too many of those out there, and it's really messing people up. So, Kosho Uchiyama, who is long dead, is saying... When I take care of my own life, Zazen, as Zazen, living Zazen, I take care of the world as my own life. I do this moment by moment, and in each situation, I am able, or I enable the flower of my life to bloom, working solely that the light of Buddha, Jiko, universal identity of loving presence, who we fundamentally are, our DNA, may shine. We are Zazen. Zazen is not something you do. We share the same sky. Be.